everybody and today we're taking a look at the transformer studio series bumblebee movie leader class megatron i haven't done a transformers video in a long time so uh, this one might be rough uh but i just got this figure and i wanted to review him so let's get into it so taking a look at the box here first uh he has a really nice looking backdrop in there with the battle on cybertron there from the beginning of bumblebee Got some Seekers on in there. And a really nice concept design of Megatron. Really makes me wish he was in the movie. But, you know, unfortunately, I guess they uh, didn't have enough money to put him in. Or uh, something like that. But they they really should have put him in. Because this design looks great. You can see that same design here on the back with his headshot. And here's the back of the box right there. With Megatron in all his glory and his two modes. Because, yes, he is a triple changer. And here's another look at Megatron on the side of the box there. Looking all really, really cool. So let's take a look at the figure. So taking a look at the figure here. Here he is in his display that he comes with in the side of the box. Which is the same background uh, that you saw on the inside of the box already. Uh, but this is the actual display inside the box that you get. And I really do like how Studio Series gets these displays, so let's take a look. So, taking a look at the actual figure here. Let's bring him up close to take a look at some of these details. So, he... If I can get him down here. Here's a close look at that head sculpt. That head sculpt looks really good. And I know this figure is going to look really good once I get some paint on him. And I'll do a video of my custom work done to him sometime soon when i get to customize him but that is definitely a megatron but um mine has a little bit of a problem here you can see there's a scratch on his chest there the decepticon logo looks a little bit off a little sideways but not too bad you see he has some red on his arms right there that cannon looks really nice that is so 80s megatron and he does have some more silver paint going on here and you can see there's one side painted red but not the other so there is a lot of things that need to be painted up to sort of match and to be fixed and you can see there he has more silver paint there he's very nice detailing his sculpt work also his back is really really clean this is one of the more cleaner figures just like the sound wave figure these bumby movie uh cybertron figures are like perfect they're damn near perfect but anyway let's take a look at articulation so let's get into some articulation so for the head go up and down and all around can spin 360 his head can go up about that far down about that far um, but if you do slightly mistransform them you can get some more range in the head for looking down and just putting that back like so and getting him standing straight up. He does have a little bit of side to side. And for the first time I think I've seen in a while, he has butterfly joints. I'm not sure if I've ever seen this on a Transformers figure. But he does have butterfly joints, which is pretty insane. So it goes pretty far. His arm goes up about that far. It can spin 360. He does have a bicep swivel right there. And he does have a forearm swivel, which is pretty crazy. And he does have a little over 90 degree bend in the elbow. And as for the hands, they spin 360. They go in and out, mainly for transformation. And he does have articulated fingers. So he has a hinge right there and a hinge right there at both knuckles, like so. So there's a hinge there, hinge there, and for the finger, he has a hinge right there and there. So you can get some posing out of the hands, which is pretty crazy. Did not expect that. His cannon does have some articulation, but that's mainly for transformation, but you can use it in robot mode if you like. So it does accordion out there on those two hinges. And you can move it around whichever way you want. And he does have a full 360 waist rotation, which is pretty crazy. 
And his legs are very articulated. Like, this is insane. So, just moving these hip skirts out of the way. Same with the front ones. Just push those forward. His legs. Now, these are crazy. So, he can do a full split. Even more than a full split. Which is pretty insane. And just using one leg for right now. His leg can kick up about that far before it hits the skirt. But you can move the that head skirt out of the way and he can kick even further which is crazy like this is insane the articulation of this thing is crazy crazy good and he does have a uh, bended knee which is just a little over 90 so it's a pretty deep bend to be honest and for the foot it can go down about that far up quite a significant amount and he does have ankle pivot so with articulation out of the way here let's move on to some size comparisons and well actually before that let's take a look at the accessory so here is his gun accessory and he does come with this cannon so it is very nicely detailed could definitely use some paint but i will be painting this figure up sometime soon it's going to be a pretty pretty fun paint job to do i'm definitely going to deck this cannon up but it does have some articulation so you can bend it there and there and actually i think i did that wrong uh because i think it's supposed to be yeah there it is so just unpeg that right there and record that out spin that around and then that tab should go into that slot right there. And there you go. Now it's right. And then just put that like so. And then you can take the figure here. And he does have storage for it on his back. So you can place that right in there. And if I can get in. There you go. And you can do that. Um, But who would want to? Because obviously you want the cannon on him. So moving into some size comparisons. So, here Megatron is with the Studio Series Bumblebee movie Soundwave. So, you can see how he looks next to Soundwave, and I think that's pretty good scaling. Megatron's always supposed to be a little bit on the taller side, so that scales up pretty nicely. Um, and they look really, really good together. So, let's also bring in Starscream, since Shockwave hasn't been released yet. So, here's the Starscream from the Bumblebee movie. And let's just kind of move these a little bit aside so that way you can get a bit of a little better idea of the scaling. So there he is. He's definitely a lot taller than Starscream. Not counting the wings on Starscream because the wings do point up quite a bit. But as far as head to head goes, it's pretty good. Now, setting Megatron back over there, let's take a look at how he looks next to some Autobots. So here he is next to the Jeep Mode Bumblebee, which I think is the best Bumblebee out of that Bumblebee movie uh, studio series kind of subline for that movie, besides the Cybertron version. So that's how he looks next to Bumblebee. And here he's next to RC from that Cybertron scene. So you can see, that's how they look together. Haven't finished RC yet. And let's take a look at how he looks next to ratchet here from the Bumblebee movie as you can see it looks pretty good together with megatron which also is an unfinished custom and here he is next to my unfinished wheeljack the only wheeljack the rise of the beast pablo is not my wheeljack you should have kept with that design uh from the Bumblebee movie i don't know why they didn't but that's how he looks next to wheeljack now for some Optimus Prime comparisons. I have two different ones that share a similar design or pretty much the same design, which just with some updates. So here he is next to the Bumblebee movie studio series Optimus Prime. Right there. This one's a older custom. So that's how he looks next to the Optimus Prime from the Bumblebee movie. And here he is next to, I think, one of my recent custom figures, at least one of them. As far as Transformers go. But here he is next to the Rise of the Beast Optimus Prime. 
with uh, upgrades on it. So there he is next to the Rise of the Beast Office Prime. So let's get into transformation. So getting down into transformation. So this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to do a transformation in this video, and then I'm going to do a transformation only video for people who don't want to see a full transformation. So first you're just going to take that cannon off here, and then we're going to work on the arms first. So you're going to come over here. You're going to make sure that these fingers are all the way down so that way the fingers are on the palm instead of on the inside of the palm so that way the hands can fit into his forearms here and you'll have it like so just make sure that index uh, pointing finger is all up in there too like so and then you're going to lift this tab right here and just slide the hand in it'll snap in there and then you just snap that down Bring the hand back down, and then you're going to do the same thing on the other side. So now that you have both hands in this kind of position going on here, what you're going to do now is going to unpeg the whole entire back section, and that is going to take the arms with it. So we're just going to lift that head up and pull that back. You're going to accordion that out like so. And then what you're going to do is you're going to lift his chest up, like that and rotate it up and make sure that the head is spun around like so and then you're just going to feed that head through just making sure it doesn't scratch the paint off like so and you're going to take these two side pieces and splay those out so now that you have something like that now that you have that together what you're going to do is you're going to take these side skirts lift those up Lift the front skirts up like so, and you're going to unpeg out the legs. We're just going to accordion out from the side, just like the Studio Series uh, Revenge of the Fallen Megatron and Shockwave for the most part. And you're going to put these legs up and just stand them up like so for right now. And as for the arms, going to move those up like so and move them on those shoulder hinges just to get those out of the way and then we're going to work on the legs first so you're going to see these little tank parts on the back part of his thighs and you're just going to try and pull those out see they lock in there you're going to pull those out like so and then what we're going to do is come down here lift that foot up and we're going to take this wing bit pull it out like so and we're going to pull the full wing piece out and move it off to the side and then we're going to take this inside tread part make sure it's unpaid from the shin like so and then what we're going to do is take this shin part move it back and well first we got to place the foot and put it all the way down and then we're going to move it back and there's going to be this tab that pegs into that tab up there on the, the end of the toe so we're just going to peg that in like so and making sure that tread piece still stays out sometimes it'll go back in if it does just push it out and we're going to make sure it's all secure and there we go so that is all secure there and we're going to take this wing piece move that down and make sure that tabs in and move that bit the opposite way so it's facing that way and just put the leg down and now that you have the leg looking somewhat like that let's do it on the other side now that you have the other leg looking the exact same we're going to bring this up and there is a tab section right there that that tab's going to poured into so just tab that in same thing with this side so just tab that on in and there you have it looking like that just make sure that the tread parts are still facing outward and now what you're going to do is move the arms back down like so then you should have it looking a little bit like that now what we're going to do is on the forearm um, swivel, 
we're going to swivel so that way the hole is on the inside of the assembly right there and you're just going to bend it so that way it kind of looks like a l you're going to do the same for the other side right there and then what we're going to do is right here we're going to bend it like so and move it in and we're going to angle it and then there's going to be a little tab there that's going to tab into that part of the arm just going to make sure that's all tabbed in so that way it's looking like that now we bring in the cannon so what we're going to do is accord accordion this out and it's going to tab up there like so just going to soft tab and sit in there and we're going to spin this barrel around making sure that the little uh, crosshair piece right there is facing upward and you're just going to peg it in on that part and you're going to peg it in on that part right there and there we should be set just place that back and there we pretty much have seeing if that tabs in not sure if it's tabbing in or not but. so here we have the tank mode so take a look at the tank mode it's not bad but it could definitely be better uh, i'm not sure if that tabs in there trying to get it to tap in but it just won't tap in for me so i i know it does i just don't know if i can really get it to do that um i'm, I'm sure i'll figure it out if i can get it in there but it does look like it tabs in there but anyway so this is the tank mode tank mode's looking pretty pretty cool um it pretty much uh you know, it doesn't exactly look like he's just laying down, uh, but, you know, the, the arms are a bit unsightly in some places. It kind of looks like a tank. Sometimes it doesn't, but, you know, you got the nice silver paint all around. Um, it doesn't have any wheels, so it can't really roll, but that is the tank mode. So, going from tank mode to plane mode, because I think that is the easiest. So, let's take a look at that here so first we're going to do is just accordion the turret upwards like so and then what we're going to do is unpick the legs like so almost as if you're going back into robot mode and we're gonna take the nose cone out of his chest like so making sure that's all straight and then pushing the head up and making sure it tabs in right there and you're gonna place those side pits, bits and place them on the head. Now going to the turret part here, we're going to unpeg the cannon like so and according the arms back out. And what we're going to do is move these legs back and out of the way. And the next step is to place this down. Oh, I think I'm doing it wrong. Um, let's go this way. Uh, no, hold on, I think I'm doing it wrong. Yeah, you got to accordion it down like so, and then put it down. And there you go. Now it's flush with the top of the jet. And then take the arms, move those down like so. Do the same with this arm like so and then you're going to take the cannon and plug it back into that same hole but this time the arms are not in any kind of configuration where you have to bend the elbows so straightening this up just a little bit it's going to look like that and then what we're going to do is just move the cannon upward like so making sure everything stays pegged in and it'll look something like that. So moving on to the side skirts here. I'm going to make sure that these side skirts right here are moved upward. And just laying up on the top like so. Like that. And let's move on to the legs. So as for the legs go. We're going to move up the wing of the jet. And just fold it out. 
I'm going to unpeg the foot from the tread, like so, and you're actually going to rotate this tread out because it's going to reveal the thrusters for the jet mode, like that, and then you're going to hinge out his shins, and then the thruster is actually going to peg in. There's a little peg right there that's actually going to peg into that slot right there, so it's a different slot that it goes into. So you're just going to make sure that that pegs in there, like so. Keeping that wing out on that side, you're going to take his thigh and move this piece out from the thigh, like so, and then we're going to bend the leg. Make sure that tread's pushed in also, by the way. So we're going to swivel his thigh right there. And then this is going to peg in right into a slot on the treads right there. So we're going to peg that in there. And just kind of weasel its way in there. And if I can get it, sometimes this is a bit tricky. There we go. And do the same on the other side. So there is the other side all done up. Now what we're going to do is we're going to... Hmm, next step is to... Okay. Yeah, next step is to accordion back in the legs like so. Same thing on the other side there. Just accordion those back in. This jet mode's a little complicated sometimes. And just make sure it rests right there. Same thing for the other side. Just make sure those tab in. Looks like that one side's not wanting to tab in. Uh, there are these pegs here on the front skirts that are going to peg into the hips. So just get that lined up. And I think that one's not pegging in because uh, that part's not wanting to go in. All right, let me just adjust this and get that thigh piece pegged in. Come on. Now it doesn't want to work with me. It was working with me all day, and now it doesn't want to since I have it on camera. Go figure. And that should, should peg in there. Mine's having trouble, so I don't, I don't know why. But anyway, that is the jet mode. So taking a look at the jet mode here, um, this one I feel like had a little bit more thought put into it than the tank mode, because um, it does look a little bit cooler looking, especially with the top, it looks a little bit more clean. I do like all the angling and the silver bits and everything. And uh, the cannon on the bottom is a pretty decent touch. Um, it does look pretty cool, and I forget, did forget to mention that the Canon is actually Blast effect, effect compatible, so you can put Blast Effects in it, which is pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, that is pretty much it for the Jet Mode. So, taking a look at the figure here, um, some final thoughts. It is an amazing Megatron figure. I really wish that Megatron was in the Bumblebee movie, because this figure is amazing, it is awesome. It looks so good. Uh, I think the vehicle modes are a little bit kind of meh, but he does look really good. And I'm sure once I paint him up, he's going to look even better. Um, I do recommend this figure a lot. Uh, there's not too much to say. It is a really good figure and I definitely recommend it. Um, the leader class price point, I think is, um, kind of justified here i mean it is really good uh and i'm glad that they're making concept designs for these characters but as far as this video goes that's pretty much all for this video so thank you for watching and uh make sure to like subscribe and i'll catch you in the next video